update courtesy of the final kids subreddit as per usual regarding them kind of responding or them being brian callan and brendan shaw on the final kid kind of responding to the excellent clip um with uh nick swartzen when he was on fear of one where he basically labeled um brendan shaw uh what's it what, what do you call him uh what do you call him keith fifa sutherland right fifa sutherland because he 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 did i think still the joke that he did in terms of the fajitas in my opinion i think so because if i remember correctly that fajita joke was like early on him kind of writing his own material and he probably thought no one would notice and then someone did notice and then he was you know you know brendan he's he's unable to kind of just say yeah my bad he always has to look like the hero of the story so he's never going to admit it but i think this response for me solidifies that number one um he definitely did steal the joke and number two also solidifies for me that more likely than not nick swartzen was the person who was the victim of the c clamp the infamous c clamp story right where allegedly brendan had to discipline somebody because they were taking the piss out of him too much we don't know who it is. He never revealed the name of the person, but I do think the person that got C-clamped outside of a comedy club might be Nick Swartzen because he's very um, funny and he doesn't mind pushing buttons and he's clearly somebody that enjoys taking a piss out of Brendan Shaw. And of course, Brendan is quite thin-skinned. He doesn't like when people joke about him and make you know fun jokes about him, all that good stuff. So clearly, I think that he might be the person who did the C-clamp. And his reaction to this whole thing and how he set it up definitely tells me that he was definitely lying and he definitely stole the joke. But anyway, this is Brian Cannon and Brendan Shaw commenting on Nick Swartzen on Nick on Fear of One. Oh no, 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 sorry, I forgot to turn. Sorry, the sounds are on. My bad. Let me put the sound on. I didn't put the sound. My bad. Let's start again. Boom, boom, boom. The sound should be working out. Was, he was like, I'm Brian Callen. I'm going to beat him up when I see him. I'm going to beat Nick up. We're going to get him on the podcast. And he By the way, I fucking hate those sandals. Have I told you that before? The fact that this grown man wears fucking sandals with selfish jeans and puts on a t-shirt and a hoodie probably and gets in his car and then has to do this. Like, it's bad enough that he's doing all this shit with his fucking bussy showing, but then he's giving us these fucking, these, what, 1,000 pound elephant um, sandals. It's absolutely, like, it infuriates me to the nth degree. I fucking hate it. It's so infuriating. Like it really is not, no one could pay me enough. There's not an, there's not an affiliate link enough that would get me to wear these shits legitimately. But this also maybe is proof of where he is in his career, that Brian Callum being as talented as he is, somebody as experienced as he is, right? Somebody connected as he is, has to rely on these fucking elephant sandals in order to keep the lights on his house and keep his family fed and shit. That is a sad indicament of the fucking Hollywood industry that somebody as storied as him, who's put as much work as him, you cannot like him as you want, but just say he put in work, Brian Callan. He's been around the block. He's fucking, what, nearly 100 years old or whatnot, right? He probably should be dead too with Queen Lizzie. The fact that he has to wear elephant sandals to feed these kids is fucking sad. It really is sad. It really does look... That's probably the greatest example of why most comedians probably should just focus on podcasts. Forget trying to be a stand-up comedian. Forget trying to be the next Dave Chappelle. Just get your own fans to support you in a podcast. Have a cool little Patreon. Make some cool content. Um, do shows. Go on tour. Forget trying to make it in Hollywood because if Hollywood decides to spit you out because they don't like you or because you cancelled or whatnot, you're going to have to promote elephant sandals. You're going to have to go to on your podcast and spread your legs out like that, right? Like some tart, <laughs> get your bussy out, get your old man bussy out with your fucking sandals on. That's what's in, that's what's in store for you. If you're a comedian and you focus on trying to be the next Dave Chappelle, because if you get cancelled, you're fucked. <laughs> He's going, I'm Brian Count. Nick Swartzen, one of my favorite people in the He's world. He's the best. I love him. And then he called you Thiefer McSutherland. Which is hilarious. He Remember when he came, when he was on the Fire the Kid back in the old studio yeah. and he roasted us? He said, he said I look like an Italian Lego. He's <laughs> so <laughs> good. Nick is the great. I just talked he's to the him. He's the funniest guy of all I time. just talked to him recently. Yeah. He was, he's doing some movie. But uh, yeah. I love him. And he is truly yeah. one of the funniest Brian people on the Callen. planet. Well, I have yeah. the clip here. So, so, yeah, so let's set it up with the clip. Yeah. especially. Yeah, now, now look, this is where the salt comes in. This for me is a clear indication that Brenda definitely stole the joke because of how angry he reacts. Because if you don't, if you didn't do something that people are accusing you of, you don't just say, oh, fuck you and fuck your mother. Here's why I didn't do it. You say, hey, man, why would you think I'll do something like that? I would never do that. This is what I meant. I meant this. I meant that. Here's my example. I don't know why you'd think that, man. You should have come and spoke to me. You're going to try to make them understand where you're coming from or you're going to try and meet them. You're going to try and 
appeal to their better nature. You're going to try and diffuse the situation. You're going to try and do something that makes you look as if like you clearly didn't do it. But you did do the thing. You usually respond with anger because you feel like anger proves that you don't care or proves that you're nonchalant but really it proves that you did the thing so listen to the language that brendan uses when he's kind of trying to set up the fact that he might have stole this joke for the people listening so it's a clip of nick swartzen and theo von talking the title says nick swartzen and brendan shaw both like fajitas yeah. so there's been you know whatever bottom dwellers being like oh see he called us and people that maybe pointed out that he might have stole that for fajita joke bottom dwellers now, from what I understand of stand-up comedians, the whole um, parallel thinking thing is pretty real, especially nowadays with everybody on being on podcasts and people talking to each other constantly and, you know, people, you know, watching the same bits of news and being on the same social media platforms and having the same, the similar type algorithms. It's inevitable you're going to stumble across a joke or a reference or a premise that other people have kind of done. And plus, comedy is comedy, isn't it? It's not that, it's not that serious. Someone else has probably done your premise somewhere else. It happens all the time. But usually, usually you understand that that could happen. So it's not like a big deal if you do accidentally copy someone. You might ring them up and say, hey, I've got this joke. Would you mind if I continue or if I tweak it? Or is it okay if we can still do it together? Or no, if we could each do it or someone has to drop it, whatever it may be. But it's not that big of a deal, really. Even if fans point it out, a case in point where Mark Norman got accused of copying that comedian's joke and he completely ripped him a new one, but in a really funny way. I didn't sense Mark Norman being sinister or angry. He was just like, how could you think I would copy you? You're fucking some, you know, you're not, you're not really that well known anyway, but let me just like have fun with it. It was just him being funny and taking the piss out of it. But the fact that Brendan will call us as bottom dwellers for me proves that he did steal the joke. Both like fajitas. Yeah. So there's been, you know, whatever bottom dwellers being like, Oh, Shab stole a bit from Nick Swartzen. He, he must have done a special on, I don't know about fajitas. And again, this whole like, Jess is saying that, <laughs> nah, Jess, I don't take that. Jess said, Nick was on field nine days ago and you and I made videos about this a couple of days ago. I think they're oppressed. You know what, Jess, I don't think that highly of myself, my dear. I think probably they might be watching you, but I generally don't think that highly of myself. And also, I don't know, Jess, just to, just to be honest, right? This is, my, this is a kind of the Christian and the Catholic in me. I'm such a former fan of these guys. I wouldn't want them to see and hear what I say and change anything they do based on what I say. I would think that was such a, that'd be so beneath them that they would move or change the way they talk or reply to something that I said. Like, who the fuck am I to be telling them what to do? They've got their careers. They're pretty much sorted. They're doing great things. They've got fans, blah, 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 blah. Like, why should they be listening to me? It, it'd be really, it'd really hurt my feelings if I found out they were actually listening to me. It would really be sad. Like, really? You guys are that low down that you have to listen to me to get feedback and tell us what you're doing? That would be sad to see. So I hope that's not happening. I hope they're just like, you know, being their being their kind of um detached um divorced from reality selves but i don't want them to be sitting there because imagine just imagine the thought just imagine the thought of brendan and brian sitting down watching fucking uniques and getting annoyed about what he says and pressed and trying to make videos like that would be so you wouldn't want to hear that that's sad same if you heard joe rogan replying to something i said like, what why is he replying to him like <laughs> <laughs> they should be above it. Like they shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't. This kind of that's why I said this kind of stuff is for us. That's why I've I've never in my life left a comment on those guys' videos. I've never in my life left a comment on those guys' videos. I've no no sorry a negative comment. I've never in my life went on their Instagram to leave a comment. I don't engage in them whatsoever. I've never sent these guys a DM. I don't give a fuck. I don't don't want to talk to them. I've had people offering me oh you interview them. I don't care. I don't have anything. To, I don't I don't just don't give a shit. Right. And I think it's better that we exist here laughing at them and they exist over there making their fans laugh. I think that's a good sort of balance. I don't think we should try to like mingle. I don't want to mingle. <laughs> I mean, and I, I honestly, it would be, it would crush my heart if I found out they watched me. I'd be like, you guys watch me. You guys are touring. You guys are going on tours, allegedly, right? Tours where you stay somewhere for like two days. Okay, tour, right? Or you play in two clubs. You're going on tours. You got merch. You're fucking meeting fans. You know, you're going on Joe Rogan. Why are you listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> but who knows who knows who knows let's call it and i had a bit on fajitas and remember my girl's mexican right so yeah but you wrote a lot of we're at all food uh, mexican food hundred, jokes. yeah a ton of them that, so oh yeah look how they're bragging about this you have a lot of mexican food jokes yeah mr hacky mahakasan over here that's not a good thing I mean, that's not a good thing my wife is mexican and 
There's nothing Mexican about you. Brent, that's the thing about Brendan is also interesting in this. I've got my theory that secretly Brendan hates his Mexican family only because, like, he can't speak the language. They're clearly, you know, very Mexican where they speak Spanish in the house all the time. The mum is always there. The probably granddad is there. Other family members are there. And he's the only, like, quote unquote American dude in there, English person, English speaking person, sorry. And he clearly can't say a lick of any Spanish. Maybe you can say hello or something or cerveza or something, right? But nothing else. And I think that he kind of, um, despise that especially younger kids coming up to him speaking Spanish and fucking around and shit so it's one thing if you're kind of being hacky and you're like being the kind of guy who respects Mexican culture that's one thing but he doesn't respect the culture he doesn't like them at all so the jokes come off a little bit like him complaining that he's got a Mexican wife and family <laughs> so it's even worse hacky it's kind of like a vengeful hacky like oh fuck I can't believe I fell in love with this woman who's Mexican and this is what they do and they've got fucking salsa cookies and it's like what? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. To, f- to frame your whole identity around I'm a white guy who's married to a Mexican woman, it's fucking weird. I think so. And I'd imagine if some Mexican woman would get a bit offended because that's a bit like you're fetishizing them, isn't it? Or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's a bit strange. It's, just, it's strange. It's hacky. It's weird. It's gross. So the fajitas, when I was saying how embarrassing it is, like we're in uh, bottle service at the club, like when we were fajitas, like, oh, out there, you're like, geez, like it's embarrassing. Yeah. Like everyone Steve turns Burns has a joke and watches you. I'm sure. So... I do, it's not a special anything. I do that bit at the comedy store. I wrote it, I don't know, right before I went on, right? So I do that bit maybe three times. And then some fan was like, I love this whole like thing he does too about I wrote it before I went on. That's a very interesting line he's starting to do a lot now. You hear him saying that a lot. I wrote it in the back. I wrote it. There. No, you don't. We know you don't write a lot of jokes. You just do the same ones and tweak them. <sighs> love, I don't know. I honestly don't think there's anything wrong. Even though I don't like his comedy, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with just having really base level, hacky, kind of frat boy type comedy and just owning up to it. But this, he wants to be everything. He wants to be the kind of, the one that does like fratty storytelling comedy stuff. He wants to be Hacky McHackerson. He also wants to be the writer guy who's sitting there kind of coming up with bits on the fly. You have to pick a lane, man. Pick one. Just pick one and stick with it. It's okay. Like he'd probably be far funny if he just stuck with one thing and just said, hey, I'm going to be the kind of relatable bro kind of comic. Here's my jokes about fucking, oh man, I was drinking a fucking um, Four loco the other day. Huh? Crazy, right? Crazy Four loco. I needed two of those and I was gone. Not four. You know, that kind of shit like i don't know i don't know i don't know what, what do i know oh that's like nick swartzen's bit i know nick has a fajita bit. he goes yeah and this is what people don't realize yeah. community the comedy community is pretty tight knit we all know each other so all i do is i love that kind of insinuation that like, we all know each other you don't know us shut up you can't have a comment on this all they want you to do as a fan especially if you're a fan of them all they want you to do is they want you to con- consume view and attend they don't want you to give them any feedback. No feedback, no commentary, no suggestion, nothing. Consume, view, and attend. That's it. That's all you're good for. You're just good for extracting money from them. Whether it's visually by watching their stuff and adding their AdSense, going to their shows, buying tickets, buying merch. But anything else, they don't want to hear from you. They're above you. Even though they need you to go to shows, because I always say it before, comedians for the most part appeal to working class people or middle class people. You're not really, you're not going to get the best and the brightest of people over there because they're busy being you know, better and brighter. So you're getting just regular folk who just want to tap out a couple of hours in the evening and go get eat some chicken fingers and, you know, talk to some girls or hang out with their wife and their friends. But then they look down on you and tell you you can't comment on what they do. It's funny. Nick is a friend. It's texting go, hey, man, heard you have fajita bit. I have a new bit that I wrote about fajitas. You have fajita bit? He goes, I have something like it. What's your premise? I go, fajitas, how embarrassing it is when you wear fajitas. It's sizzling. It's like wearing bottle service to the club. He goes, not exactly like my not exactly like mine i can see how people see it i went all good not gonna do it anymore Stop I, doing i've it. done that so many times i had a t-rex joke and there was a that's a good point someone said here coila was it said no or keith mcloyd uh, mcloyd said as well the punchline goes nowhere it's a sound effect it's true in it it doesn't go anywhere okay fees are like for here's it's like ordering bottle service at a club okay mildly funny but where does it go it just doesn't it's just okay the the, the effects the sparkles but what 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 is the punch here at the end Nothing. It's just, okay, this is like, but th- that's to be fair, that's what his comedy is like, isn't it? That thing is like, I was like, he was like, she was like, they did, but there's no like punch. It's just like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I did a T Rex joke and I realized it was just too close. So it used to kill. I stopped doing it. 
And by the way, I'll never worry about rap. I had seen it. I had- anyway, you you get the point. I don't, don't want to fucking hear Brian kind of pontificating, acting as if he's fucking, I don't know, comedian of the year. We know, we know, we know, we get it, brother. 